Hey guys, so I'm gonna talk about PISA. This is uh, also a collaboration with Patrick. And Ido Bentov, Andrew Miller, and Sarah Michael John, it's a cross university thing. So this kind of builds off of these sprites construction and tries to improve it to kind of tackle these problems of liveness requirement. So first, you know, state channel hype is um, obviously why everybody's here. Um, you know, so we have Raiden, and Lightning, and we have all these guys trying to work on an L4 counterfactual. I mean, and we also have a lot of research into it, right? We just saw sprites. This is also a research work. And um, we will see Perun later as well. And so it's essentially the bad news here, like, he, like Patrick said, is that everyone has to be online, and then everyone having to be online is kind of bad in that the trade-off is quite severe with blockchains. And blockchains, I can be on-chain. Like, even, even if I go offline, I'm kind of guaranteed that my money can't be stolen, the history can't be reverse channel security only exists if everyone's online or online all the time. And so how can we solve that problem, right? So we saw here how updates work. Everyone kind of says, okay, here's a new command, a new update state, a new counter. I'm going to sign it. And everyone agrees on it. Great. However, if someone's offline, then there's a huge lengthy dispute process. I have to submit the state online. I have to do an on-chain transition. And that takes several blocks, you know, at, um, at minimum. And so that is really not that good, right? So, but if they aren't trustworthy at all, if these two guys say, okay, instead, I want to change history, I want to do, I want to do an execution fork, then they can submit on chain, and and if you know if the current state is S1, S2, S3, S4, they can say, fine, I'm going to submit some old S2, and I'm going to start doing state transitions there. In fact, this S2 can be, in the case of a game, say, I don't like this player. He always wins. I always lose. We can collude and, and update our state in a way that kicks him out of the game. And then we can just keep playing you know, on our own. And so in a scenario where I'm you know, an auction, e-voting, or playing poker, for example, that's extremely dangerous since I can just be kicked any time, really. So the ideal solution is that we have some incentivized third party to just come in and show up and say, OK, you know, here's the latest state every single time. In this case, this is just a state channel. Barry says, OK, here's the latest state. And she tracks the latest state for every single channel that exists and always shows up on every dispute. On-chain, miners accomplish this because they have an incentive to do so. They, if they don't, they are heavily penalized, and they're always, of course, given this coin-based transaction as payment for ensuring correct execution of history and not being able to rewrite history, right? So practically, though, I have to hire someone in this case, and that's essentially the technical challenges here are how do I incentivize them, how do I pay them, how do I get them to do what I want to do, how do I hold them accountable that if I do say, here's a state, here's 10 bucks, that they actually go ahead and execute this um, dispute resolution on my behalf? How do I get around having to reveal every single state I've ever done? If it's a game, then I have the problem where do I really want everyone to know every single, every single vote I've made on every single you know, resolution in some e-voting setup? I don't, really. And so I would like to hide the state. And finally, how do I stop them from colluding with everybody else? Right, so there's two existing solutions that I think have been talked about already. There's monitor, then there's the watchtower. So monitor is designed essentially for lightning pro protocol. So it's really only for two party channels and payment channels at that. And essentially because of how UTXOs work, we have this all event storage requirement for anyone who tries to monitor channels since I have to store every single previous state in order to to be able to invalidate any of them. The other issue here is that the monitor's only paid when there's a dispute. So theoretically, if everyone thinks someone is there, if the monitor exists, is watching, they would never cheat. If someone never cheats, then the monitors are never paid. And, and for example, right, if you have, for example, 10,000 channels, a monitor's watching, a million payments per channel. So let's say this is some large, you know, retailer, online retailer. That's essentially a one terabyte of TX storage. And if nobody cheats, this monitor is not compensated at all for consuming this resource. And that's really not going to work since over time, 
founders will start to leave and we'll be back to square one. And last point is that the monitor is not held accountable at all. So I can give them a state all I want and they don't really have to sh show up at the end. Now, right, so this is a quick, I don't know what that box is, but this is a quick summary of what is accomplished in monitor. Now we go to Watchtower, right? Now this uses replaced by state counters. And so that is kind of a lot easier since you have this O of N goes now to O of one. I only have to store the latest signed counter and that's enough to invalidate any previous state. However, um, this still, still has a problem that is currently hard to do in Bitcoin. It's not, there's uh, the op code, they need essentially a new op code to implement what they're trying to do. So that's a little hurdle to adoption, I suppose. And, and again, the monitor in this case now, now is paid every time I give them a new state. However, the problem of being accountable is still, is still open that I can now give them a state, I can pay them every time and they can leave and then I have no re recourse for punishing them, right? So you have to assume that custodians, that custodians want to build reputation by always showing up, otherwise nobody hides them. In other words, you essentially hope that there's at least one honest custodian that you've hired who will show up. And you know, even that is not, I think, a totally secure option. So we ideally want somebody to be able to be held accountable and ensure that somebody shows up all the time, right? And so this improves on monitor significantly, right? We see this um, other problem exists of verifiable dispute resolution. So in Lightning, I just give a blinded, um, uh, blinded transaction to any monitor I have. However, he has no way of knowing whether our state is actually, actually can be decrypted or actually is an actual state, right? So I can say here's a thousand states and they don't ever actually exist or, or even actually show up. However, here, since you have state counters, everyone has signed a counter, so at, in, you know, at least I'm certain that I can invalidate any state with a small counter, and essentially that I can't just be lied to by a customer. And so this is where our goals come in, right? So I want state privacy, only ever the hash state is handed to a custodian. We have a fair exchange for a payment for a signed receipt in a way that I ensure that anytime I pay, I make sure that everybody knows that the person, I was, they were appointed with a payment and I can give that receipt to do recourse as a deterrent because I can produce it anytime in the future to penalize somebody, for example, if, they, if I hired them and they didn't show up. <coughs> Finally, I also want some sort of safeguard for a custodian I hire. So if I say, here's a, here's a new state and everyone in the channel colludes against him, um, there's no way if he acts honestly, he can be unfairly punished. And again, you know, since, since this is off sprites and we do state counter um, state, state channels, the storage is essentially over one. So here's how it works in, in uh, sprites at the moment. So an example, we have an auction, somebody says, okay, the new state S1 is the auction's beginning, everybody distributes it, checks the signature, everyone's happy, great. Now what we do is everyone at channel creation time agrees on a random nonce R and that R is used to generate a new random number for every single round and instead of distributing just a state amongst themselves, we distribute a blinded version of the state and the contract itself can also accept the blinded version because as long as it knows the counter uh, is, not, is in plain text, everything still works out and we have privacy in this case, right? Now, how do you actually do a fair exchange to appoint somebody to monitor your channel, right? So there's the question exists of how do you give them a payment, right? Now, I, I, I can do with an existing payment network, I can use RAID and Lightning Network, or the easier way is to just have a, a custodian sets up many, many one-way channels with, with uh, any customer, and they can just pay that way, and so I can go offline and my money is not at risk. I'll come back to this later as we talk about the to turn in the later slides. And so some assumptions, I guess, have to be made in terms of what the custodian already knows. So we assume they have the state channel address and they know the contract to watch and as well how to settle a dispute. And they also know, and they also publish how much they want for every new appointment, every state I give them, how much they won't want to be paid. 
and how long the receipt time period is. So in this case, in this case the receipt's only valid for a certain time period. Only if there's a dis uh, dispute in that time period can I be held accountable as a custodian. And finally, the custodian also has to deploy his own contract. The contract implements you know, any one-way payment channel as well as holding a large security deposit, or in this case, large enough that can be used as sort of collateral in case he cheats. And you know, the customer can also check the contract to ensure that the receipt is valid for at least as long as the settlement period in his contract and that his deposit is large enough to cover my channel's, I guess, uh, channel's value. Okay, so now how do you, how do you appoint, right? So, oh, excuse me. <laughs> so it starts off with, I first check the custodian contract to see if all the parameters are correctly set, the receipt time period is accurate, and then say, okay, now I'm happy, and so I'll start a channel in the contract, and I'll give some sort of deposit to, to, that I can use to pay with, and then I start the exchange by first sending the blinded state and the round number to the custodian, right? So the exchange starts with the blinded state, custodian checks that everything is okay, that all this signatures are correct, and says, fine, I'm happy with this, and sends me back a, a receipt. Now it says here in the receipt that it tells me how long the appointment is, so if a settlement or a dispute period starts after and ends before these two numbers, then the custodian is actually held accountable for it. It says the hash date, he's been appointed to watch, and it also gives me some hash, some random hash number H that will get used later. And so I'll say, okay, I'm happy with that, and then I form a conditional payment to him on that hash R, on the hash H, saying that here's a payment, I've accepted your receipt, and only if you disclose this pre-image to me can this payment actually get completed either off-chain or on-chain, right? So in the best case, I hope that, the best case I hope that within some time out, the custodian tells me the pre-image off-chain, off I can see that I get the pre-image that makes the receipt valid because the receipt signs a certain hash value. Otherwise, the, the custodian cannot complete the fair exchange, say he still wants the payment, but he goes on chain to redeem it. He still either way has to reveal the pre-image at some point, either off chain or on chain. So in any case where he redeems the payment, the receipt he gave me is always, always valid. So we achieve a fair exchange where neither party can get a payment or a receipt unfairly, essentially. And so this is where the exchange is complete, and now I have some sort of accountability proof in case he cheats in the future. And so now the interaction goes like this. So this is now, let's say some player submits a new bid. Everyone says, okay, great, this is happy. They go do the exchange offline. Everyone, and then there's new states, exchange offline, new states. And now at this point, this the channel says, okay, now this customer here accepted the bid and now he's won. And so the custodian is appointed, but now let's say the guy who submitted the highest bid in the auction, he goes offline. And now everyone says, okay, I really don't like this guy. I want him to get kicked out of the auction. I don't want to cancel his bid so I can pay a smaller amount and get the same item, right? So they say, fine, now let's bribe the auctioneer give him some coins to also collude with us. And now we go, go on chain and say, and we submit the old state where his, his smaller bid was accepted. And so they try to go on, on chain, submit the older state. However, now the custodian exists. The custodian says, wait a minute, this state is only round two. I actually have a state that's round four. And they submit it on chain and everybody's happy that the history can't be changed and, and the execution of the auction can't be forked. Now, the issue arises now, let's say the custodian either goes offline or the channel, the other guys in the channel can collude and also get him to not show up, right? And this is where the financial deterrent comes up on the custodian's part. So now he's offline or colluding. And now they say, okay, the state has been submitted, the old one, the contract logs the dispute, saying that at some point there was a dispute period that ended in round two, and the channel is now going off chain again. So at some later time, like even after the auctions ended, I can come back and say, oh, I see a dis 
dispute here ended in round two, although I have a receipt saying that he has to ensure that the state, that a, any dispute ends in at least round four. So I can tell his contract, here's a receipt that's signed by him, and I, and I say, here's the pre-image I already know of that makes a receipt valid. The, the contract goes and checks the state channel saying, okay, was there a dispute during the time period in, in the receipt? The answer is yes. Is the round number of the dispute less than our receipt? The answer is again yes. Is the pre-image that I gave and that's in the receipt also the correct pre-image of the hash in the receipt? The answer is yes again. In that case, uh, the contract says, okay, now I can burn his deposit and now he's penalized. So essentially, this is where the large enough collateral comes into play because if the total channel value is more than his deposit, there is a case where a bribe can be made by everybody else where the custodian can still make a profit even by cheating and losing his collateral. So I have to ensure prior to appointment that his collateral is large enough to cover my channel at least along with anybody else's. And so this is where the, the deterrent comes up where it's only secure to limit. So, if, so again, I mean, there is always some amount of bribe I can give that'll compensate the custodian for cheating so I have to essentially guarantee any time I point that he has enough collateral. Problems arise whether if the custodian is monitoring, let's say, 10 channels, then you know, I have to not only ensure my own channel is, um, is compensated for, but as, as well as everyone else's channel. Now, the other issue that arises is fine. The, the custodian can be penalized. However, I've, I've still lost my money. I've still lost state and the, and the execution fork at some point still happened, even though there's a deterrent. So I, maybe I want to be compensated and I can require the custodian compensates me for it. However, we have found that this is actually a worse deterrent since there are civil attacks the custodian can run to, to regain his losses and still accept a smaller bribe and still make a profit and cheat in my channel. And the compensation essentially becomes low enough for me that I've still lost essentially all my money. There's a an, an, uh, more detailed and complete analysis of this in our paper that is on ePrint, it's on archive, so go check that out. Um, but uh, yeah, so in summary, we've kind of achieved every goal that we set out to achieve. We have state privacy, fair exchange. Now I can seek recourse since I have a signed receipt. I have this, this notion of non-frameability that as long as I'm a custodian, I'm honest. Any number of colluding parties cannot sacrifice my deposit. I won't lose any money as long as I'm honest. And we have that we have O1 storage in that I only have to store per customer a single hash and the round number and signatures from all parties. And so the scales, I think, a lot better since, since we also ensure that the custodian is paid not only if there's a dispute, but every time I give them a new a new hash value, so essentially I'm paying for occupying some amount of storage, and that stays constant no, no matter how long I choose to hire him as, as, my, as my custodian. I can hire any number of custodians, and that's you know slightly better in terms of being compensated, or if they crash and I know that at least a single honest person shows up. So this is kind of a s summary of everything, right, where PISA, I guess, succeeds over the other existing solutions. This list may not, uh, so Watchtowers um, kind of has these two areas where I guess that either isn't the express intended purpose or it's just, um, or at least for accountability, it's not, it's not there. And finally, this is just, I guess, an, a second summary <laughs> of PISA, right? So we, this is the state channel construction from sprites and we have safety in that everyone always gets the coins they deserve. We have liveness that the state channel never actually has to close. If I crash and everyone goes on chain, I can always come online again and we keep our game going. And finally, given now that a custodian exists, we have an accountable third party if we have all these goals. And future work currently is to essentially, there aren't really that many applications out there that use state channels and there isn't really widespread uses state channels, so the goal is to empirically evaluate you know, it, it, how state channels work as a scalability solution, and 
how can we actually fit PISA into existing and future state channel applications? Um, I think that's it, yeah. This last slide. I don't know how long that was. I don't know if this is going to come back on or not. Oh, awesome. Okay, so is there any questions? Yep, there's one over there. I'll run over quickly. I'll try. Um, two questions, actually. The yeah. first is, have you done any financial analysis on the security deposit that you have to do and the cost of uh, having those funds free set? It's, in the, it, it's all in the paper. Yes. Awesome. awesome, thanks. And the second is, have you tried to, uh, for the deterrent, uh, have some fraction of that burn and some fraction of that return to the... To the so if you Financial. see it as a case of, right, so if, I have a, if I'm a custodian and I say my collateral can be compensated to someone else, I can then go, go off and create, you know, 10 channels of my own where I hire m myself. They all fail. They all claim compensation. And now the actual channel who's, or the actual channel who wants me as a custodian, now their compensation from the large security d deposit is a lot less, right? And so really the compensation can, I can it, essentially drain my own collateral by Sybil attacking all, all the channels I'm Right, watching. right, but you are still deterred because uh, say like a large fraction, like half of it, you're yeah. burning it. So well, yeah. think of a case where I'm doing a um, polling uh, scheme, I right? Understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you mix both of them, yeah, you get like a little bit of both, but. Okay, I think the summary there is basically if the custodian can make more money cheating, he'll always do it. Yeah. Okay, what about the next one? Yep. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, um, you know, like uh, for like, like a banking, you have like Basel model, like where you have like um, the rate, like how much the bank or custodian must reserve in case of default. Like, okay, basically, like, let's say like uh, you have a 10, I'm uh, among 10 and you are Pisa Tower, and like uh, your total so, like reserve is uh, larger than my uh, like um, amount, but we are other ten people plus together, so we like a lot more than your reserve is, right? Mm -hmm. So like um, uh, in case of uh, you cheating everyone, you still like uh, getting the benefit um, by cheating ten people. So like uh, how uh, what is the deter deterrent for that? So I mean, so every state channel that the custodian has to watch is not. I mean, it's value I can't estimate, right? But at least with implementing a, in implementing a payment scheme where it's a, where the custodian has a contract where everyone pays into it, I at least have some idea of how many channels he is going to watch. And so maybe I want some sort of scheme where, um, you know, he can lock some funds, although that also creates problems with, with yeah. actual the cost of operation, right? So if I say that my channel is worth X amount of dollars and I want at least, you know, X dollars in your deposit uh, set aside for me. Now he might charge me me extra fees to appoint every state since he has to now reserve a lot more money. So I mean, you have to, I guess, consider a trade-off where you have to pay more to have more security, but at least, you know, with, um, I guess, some, some vague sense of large enough deposit, um, I guess you can, as long as compensation is not existent, he, it's hard for him to, Sybil attack everybody, and so it's a deterrent still exists where cheating in any place, he will still lose his deposit, and so there really is no case where if he cheats in mind, the bribe exists, but I mean, you have to kind of evaluate that and take your own risk. I mean, there is no way to estimate how, many, how much value exists in all customers he's watching, yeah, but you have to at least ensure it covers your own. I mean, there really is a Trade off there, but I don't know exactly yeah, how you I can summarize it if you that. want. Like, for example, in the, in, the, in the appendix, there's a detailed analysis of this, but like, there's some ways you can get around it. So, you're saying that what if there's too many customers and their value exceeds the deposit? So, what you could do is actually say, well, every time I hire someone, I allocate a part of the security deposit for them. So, maybe your channel's worth 10 coins, so now 10 coins of my security deposit is also reserved. Then you have some issues with that as well. I mean, customers may have to pay a larger fee for that, and they won't do it, so they're willing to take risk. Uh, that also restricts the number of people you can hire. Mm -hmm. So actually, what we discovered was that when we were going through this analysis, 
This is like a generic issue for any protocol where you have a central entity of a large security deposit. So uh, what's really cool is that now we can look at other protocols and say, does this problem apply for them? And it most likely does. But yeah, yeah. that's probably a good summary. What? Okay. And Plasma, yeah, actually, yeah, I think this may be a problem for Plasma as well. So that's why further investigation is definitely useful. And we have one more question, and I've Thank already you. given the mic. Awesome. Thank All you. right. Uh, I actually had two questions. But oh, go ahead. You can have, uh, you can have both. Uh, one, is, one is very simple, same as, same as before. Uh, does it work on Bitcoin as well? So in the same way that Watchtower can work on Bitcoin, this also, in a way, can work on Bitcoin since we are doing, uh, you know, counter Place by counter, however, you know we're aiming for more generalized state channels with end parties, not just payment channels. It can work in payment channels, however, you need some mechanism to have this sort of idea of a counter and check this counter signature and not have to store every old state. So it can, in theory. Yeah, and only actually, for you should also mention the fair exchange protocol. So that fair exchange of the receipt, where I get evidence I've hired this custodian, that works. That works. So that's really cool, but you can't do recourse. I mean, I can't use his evidence to say he cheated me and forfeit a deposit. Okay. But you have public evidence now that you hired someone and they didn't actually do anything for you. All right. So There's at least some accountability. in terms of a, a reputation, I can say, you know, no one's going to hire me again. Yeah. And so that's kind of, okay, that's at least more of a deposit thing. turn to nothing. No, not in Bitcoin yet, unfortunately. Because right. there's no idea of state, and so you can't really say, here, check my receipt. All right. The other thing I, I didn't get is like in watchtowers, you get pretty strong guarantees, like that. Uh, actually, the, the watchtower doesn't learn anything. Like he doesn't learn anything about what, what, even what uh, um, contract he's watching. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, does this uh, keep this uh, level of anonymity? No. So he knows that the contract he's watching, and he always knows the oh, on-chain right. settled state of the contract. So even on-chain, the parties have to only submit the hash date and the round number, right? So I mean, even though I can see on-chain. If the channel is not closing, I still don't know every any intermediate state, although I do know the contract I'm watching. Okay. Um, yeah. And I can also add into that. So what you can actually do, and we want to investigate over the summer, is that you can have a state channel contract that just has a state channel, and that's it. And the application is another contract, and that can be kept off chain. So you can see, it's a bit like seeing a multi-sig on the block. You know, you see the state channel. We know this is a state channel. That's what we'll learn, unless there's a dispute. And then the contract obviously has to go on blockchain to resolve it. Well, actually, I mean, it doesn't actually have to go on blockchain to resolve it. Only the hash has mm -hmm. to be there. But anyway, yeah. So I'll. Great, thanks. Thank you, Syria. Yep. Oh, we're out of time, so we can take this offline. Any more questions? Oh, Le okay, Left Terrace, sorry. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> it's just a simple oh. question. I'm, I'm not sure if it was covered. So, how do I, as a, a user who runs a node and. Um, uh, have my channels that I want to be monitored, how would I be selecting, uh, would there be multiple monitors? Would there be some kind of uh, registry? And in, in uh, what way would I choose? I mean, so me as a custodian, I can advertise anyway. I can, I can have some contract where everyone says, here, I'm a custodian, here's my contract. Ch check my collateral amount. If you're happy with it, come hire me. Otherwise, I can you know, go on. Yeah. Reddit or something, say, here, I, you know, here's my new service. Check out our site. Here's my contract. If you're happy, come hire me. I mean, like, they're, they're, I mean, any way that I would advertise myself on the internet, I, I, can, I can do the same thing here. I can create a registry on chain, uh, and that also works, but I don't really see, I mean, there's an advantage there that I don't have to be on, on Reddit, for example, but at least I can see everyone on on Ethereum, who has a collateral, and I'll have to, and I don't have to judge it's based on any sort of reputation. I just have to judge that their security deposit and contract parameters are suitable for my state channel. Yeah, I could also mention that hopefully it'll be micro payments. So hopefully you can hire multiple custodians. You know, there's like a market off them. You hire three or four, and hopefully they're micro payments. So it's like a penny to hire them. Do you think would you hire them for the latest state you're interested in? Mm -hmm. They could be getting thousands of payments every hour from lots of different people. I mean, that's not so. really kind of solve how you select to monitor. I mean, that's just... Yeah, just distributing it out. And if they're cheap, you can hire them more. But yeah, the metrics should still be worked out. You can out. hire but as but you do imagine yeah. uh, having multiple monitors uh, yeah. as a backup, right? Yeah, yeah. I think definitely... I can more. hire as many as I want. Everyone else on the channel can hire as many as they want. 
and you know. Yeah, I don't need one of them needs to resolve this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll I'll move on. So, uh, yep. So thank you, Syria. That was awesome. <laughs> GG. Oh.